Hey guys, Hi. for this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to add wind in your game. You can see over here, I have wind on the grass, or in this grass, or you can just have wind on like cloth, or in your trees. With this tutorial, you can add wind to almost anything. So I'll be showing you how you can add it now. First, you're gonna need Blender. I'll leave you a link in the description for the download. So you can just delete everything in here. For this tutorial, you can do two methods if you wanna add wind. First method is using Blender and just adding bones onto a mesh and then applying wind onto that. You can also do a different method where you don't need to use Blender at all. So skip forward in the video to see the second method. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'm just gonna be showing you how to add like a, how to add wind onto cloth. So I'm just gonna do something simple. Let's add a plane. So I'm just gonna rotate this by pressing R, X, and then typing 90 on my keyboard. And then I'm going to switch from object mode to edit mode. I'm just going to stretch this out and make this into like a cloth. So now what you're going to do is press control and R on your keyboard, hover over the mesh and then just move your scroll wheel and just get a lot of subdivisions. Double click whenever you got how much you want. You just want to put enough so it's more smoother when your cloth curves in the wind. I'm also just going to add a little thing. Um, you don't have to do this. It's just something to make this look more interesting. Okay, there you go. There's like my flag. Okay. Now we're going to have to add the bones. To do this, click add, then click on armature. Now I'm going to press R, Y, and then 180 to flip it over. Now... Just move this up to here, switch object mode to edit mode, click on this little ball, switch to move tool, press E and then drag it down and just do this multiple times. It doesn't matter how many, just press E then click and then drag it down, E then click and drag it down. I think I'm actually just going to do this much. Yeah, there, that looks good. You just want to cover the entire uh, flag to make sure I go down enough. Doesn't have to be exactly the same length. You just want to cover the entire thing. Okay, I'm going to switch back to object mode. If your bones are, if you can't see your bones, it's like this. You can select your bones, click on this, click on viewport display, and then click on in front. Now you can see them. Now hold shift, click on your mesh, and then your bones. And then click on object, parent, and then click with automatic weights. Now you can click on your bones and then go to object mode and switch to pose mode. Over here, you can just see if everything is moving correctly. So you just click on a bone, then press R and then just move your mouse. And everything seems to be moving fine. Uh, but you, if you have an issue, oh, I see something that I want to change. So you can see when I curve mine, I can see these lines, which I don't want. What you can do to fix that is just select on your mesh, right click it, then click on shade smooth. I'm going to go back and see if that's gone. And it is good. So basically you just curve this and that's how it's going to look like in the wind. So I'm going to curve those two and it'll look like that in the wind, which is pretty good. If you have something wrong when you're curving them, I'll show you how to fix that. So click on your bones, then click on hold shift and click on the flag. And then click change object mode to weight paint, hold control, and then click on the whichever bone has problems. Um, let's see, I don't really have a problem with any of mine, but let's just say if, uh, let's just say if this bottom bone was moving the entire thing like this, and I did not want that. What you can do is click on here, then click on subtract, and you can change the size of the tool over here. So I'm going to change the radius and then just color it. So whatever is blue won't move but whatever is closer to red will move so I only want the bottom parts to move so let's just remove that now I'll move it and I can see it's moving fine I can switch back to add by just clicking here then clicking add and just drawing back on and you can switch back to subtract and there you go you can see the bottom parts only moving which is what I want you can do that with the other bones if there's any problem but mine seems to be working fine now when you're done, when you're done with everything, click on file, 
click on export and then click on FBX. Now you just name it anything. You can put it in any folder. It does not matter. Now, after you're done saving, go to Roblox Studio. Now that you're in Roblox Studio, click on avatar and then click on import rig. Now just open up what we just saved. Now this will pop up. Just click on import. Now your model might be really big. Just size it down. Hold control and then size it down. Sometimes that helps. Or what you can do is open up the model, click on the mesh itself, and then hold control and size it down. Now, within your model, just delete initial poses and animation controller. You won't be needing either of those. Now open up the link in the description that's labeled Smart Bones. Now for this model, it'll only work for um, meshes that have bones. And since we added bones in Blender, this model will work for this method. So just open up the model. You'll see it says replicate first and replicate storage. So just put those within each and then ungroup. So I'm going to put replicated first within replicated first. And then I'm going to right click it and then ungroup. I'll do the same with replicated storage. Now you can delete the smart bone slash win physics model. Next, you're going to have to download this plugin. It's free. I'll leave the link in the description and it will be labeled tag editor. So just install that. Go back to Roblox Studio. Now open up the plugin. You're going to add a new tag. So click over here with this add new tag and name it exactly this smart bone together and uppercase S and B and press enter. Now you want to open up your model or of your mesh, select their plane or the mesh of your model. And then just press the check mark next to smart bone. Now click on your mesh, scroll all the way down in properties to attributes, click the plus next to attributes, and then type the name roots exactly like that, capital R, and then click on save. Now open up your mesh. And for me, it just says bone. So I'm going to write down bone here, but you might have something like, um, like when you open it up, you might see something like bone and then bone three. So if you have something like that, you would name it bone comma, no space, and then bone three. So you write something like that if you have more than one. But for me, I just have a bone. So I'm just going to write down bone exactly the same capital B. And after that, click on the plus next to attributes again, change string to number, and then name it exactly like this when influence exactly like that, and then click save. Now this is basically the higher number you put, the more wind there will be. So I'll just put 30. Now click on your flag and then click on model and then make sure it's anchored. Now I'll just test your game and see if the wind's working. There you go. You can see there's wind. Obviously you can add a texture to this or just do like a better model and have it in your game. Just to show this working with any other rig model, you can go to the toolbox and look up something that has bones. So I just searched up rig trees and I can click on avatar then click on animation editor and just open this up or just click on it. And I can see there's bones within this. So no will work. So now you just follow the same steps. You can delete the animation controller. Just click on the mesh and then click on the check mark next to smart bone within the tag editor plugin. Scroll down, uh, click the plus next to the attributes, name this roots, open it up. I see it just says bone. So I'll name this bone. And then add another attribute, change it to number, name it wind influence, save, and then I'll just put it as 20. And that's the game. That's completely it. And there you go. You can see this one's also moving. One more thing you may realize when you're, when you move your camera far away from these two, they just freeze. They stop moving in the wind. And when you go back to it, they go like crazy. This is also a good thing though, because it helps with performance. So if your game is laggy, then you don't have to do this. But if you want to fix this thing where it just freezes, I'll show you how to fix that. So what you do is open up replicated storage. You'll see smart bone, open that up open up dependencies and then open up default settings and then you'll see activation distance just change this to a high number let's just put it as 300 and test the game and that should fix it so now when i go far away it's still moving and when i come back it doesn't go crazy and that's fixed now i'll be showing you the second method where you don't have to open up blender or use any bones the second method 
it works for just single meshes that doesn't have any bones. So basically use this method if you want to apply wind to something that doesn't have any bones attached to it. To open up the other model that I uh, left in the description that's labeled wind with parts. So just open up the model, then you'll see starter player scripts. So just drag this within starter player scripts. That's within starter player and then ungroup it. Now you have to name whatever you want to have wind as leaf ball. So like for this grass, I'd open up its model, click on its mesh, go to properties, and then change its name, or its name, change its name. Let's say if it was named mesh or something like that, if it's named mesh part. You wanna click on it and then change its name to leaf ball. And you wanna do that with every single leaf part. So I selected all of these different grasses and then named them leaf ball, exactly like that. I did the same with the bush. And then all you have to do next is click on the plus next to workspace and then search folder and then click on folder. You want to rename the folder to trees, exactly like that. And then you just put whatever you named the leaf ball within that folder. And that's it. That's all it is for this other method. Now test the game and see if it works. And there you go. You can see it's barely moving. Just a small wind. I'll show you how to make it so there's more wind. Within starter player and then starter player scripts. Just double click the, the wind controller script. And over here, you'll see wind speed and wind power. These two sound self-explanatory. So if you want more wind speed, you increase the number. So I'll just change, change this to two and this to um 30. And now just test the game and see if it's moving more. And there you go. You can see now both the grass and bush is moving faster. And again, I'll just put it in a random tree model just to quickly show you that this works with anything. Let's our tree and let's apply it to this one, this pine tree. So again, you want to rename each leaf. So I'm just going to select each leaf model or each leaf union. This also works with unions, not just like parts. So I'm just going to rename all of these to exactly leaf ball. And then just drag the model into the trees folder. And that is it. So just play the game. And there you go. If this video helped, please consider subscribing or at least leaving a like. If you have any questions, tell me them in the comments and I'll try to respond. And that's it. Bye.